Hey, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, Professor. I was just confused that we had class today because all my other classes, I don't have class. For some <laughs> well, good morning, Professor. Good morning. Good morning, Jordan. Good morning, Jason. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, you know, I, I just logged in and uh, so you guys maybe, you know, but, you know, I, oh, I haven't. Oh, that's that's why. Um, I normally uh, start with sharing my screen. Somehow, you know, I haven't done it yet, so probably that's what caused confusion. Because uh, when I log in, if I if the first thing I do is sharing my screen, you would instant you would instantly notice, that, you know, um, uh, I'm in and the class is in session. Well, so um, uh, I see 10 people here, 10 people in the uh, collaborate session. And let me just check how many are in the uh, today's forum. So I see 12, 12 people in uh, today's forum. So we still, um, still need to give some time for two more people to uh, uh, to join the uh, collaborate. Well, um, so uh, no, not this one, but uh, um, we're we're done actually with the uh, uh, single cash flow model as of last Wednesday. Uh, So we need to uh, start on the uh, multiple cash flow, and basically either single cash flow model or multiple cash flow model. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it's all just you know time value of money. Um, where is compound? Okay. But the distinction is mainly because uh, distinction is clearly because of the uh, the cash outflow and cash inflow. Um, so let's think about it. Um, the, okay, there's too much noise for me. Uh, it's not that difficult to understand why it's called, you know, a single cash flow model and multiple cash flow model. Let me. Okay. So basically, um, finding future value, right? This way, P times one plus R raised to N, uh, and, and all the uh, related related models, right? Uh, finding P, finding R, finding N. These are all called single cash flow model because uh, single cash flow. Why? Now think about it. Um, uh, in, uh, let's think about the future value, right? This future value is a single cash outflow, right? Single cash outflow that uh, originated from single cash inflow. Isn't that right? You make a $10,000 deposit in the bank today, time zero, and n years later, right? n years later, right? Uh, uh, with, you know, after, you know, uh, annual 
uh, interest rate of R percent, right? You arrive at this uh, future value that will be your cash outflow. And this is your uh, cash outflow, right? That leaves you. And this is your cash inflow and years later. And think about it. There was just one single cash outflow and just one single cash inflow, right? Hence, single cash flow model, right? Uh, but, you know, um, uh, that is not the way uh, in reality, right? I mean, you know, uh, this applies well. For example, you put, you know, $10,000 in the bank today at 10% interest rate. Ten years later, how much is this going to be? Or, you know, um, that's uh, like when you put your money in the bank. Or let's say you put, you know, uh, $10,000 in a stock, right? Um and whatever stock you put $10,000 in, and uh, uh, of course you won't put all $10,000 in one single stock, but you know, uh, uh, you diversify your portfolio. You know, you don't put, uh, of course $10,000 isn't that much to diversify, but you know, still diversification is very important because you don't put all your nest eggs into one basket. But anyway, let's say you put, you know, $10,000 in a, a single stock and the stock uh, re annual return on the annual return on the stock will be all different. It will be all uneven. But, you know, if you find average, right, uh, for, the fa uh, for the past, you know, five years or uh, past five years, what was your mo uh, average monthly returns, monthly or average annual returns, if you can find it. And then uh, N years later, it's going to be exactly, it's going to work this way. Exactly, it's going to get compounded and you will arrive at a certain future value. And when you sell, when you sell it, then you get the cash inflow. You, you know, uh, you realize the gain and uh, so the point is, you know, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that works well with your deposit and stock. So when you buy stock, you should really consider that like a deposit, right? In other words, um, if you're a day trader, um, you'll just, you'll just wear out your energy by, you know, uh, trading frequently. Right, buy and sell, and buy, buy and sell, and buy and sell repeatedly. By trading frequently, you'll just exhaust yourself, and the fees, right, transaction cost. After you know, um, uh, subtracting the transaction cost, your holding period return won't be any better than just you know keeping it in the stock for long term. Let's say for five years, you know. Um, and um, uh, for example, I I have a, uh, a small portfolio that I started out in like around uh, I guess around 2014, 2012 or 2014. It's I think um, 2014. Uh, initial, my initial investment, uh, I mean, compared to my initial investment, and since then I have added, uh, you know, a uh, uh, fund, more fund, you know, a couple of times, but since 2000, I would say 14, I started probably in 2014, and um, it's, it's been like, you know, uh, uh, six, seven years, and although I added in a couple of, you know, uh, 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 I added funds, you know, a couple of times, but, you know, not huge, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, about 10% of the initial investment. And um, uh, and a couple of times. So uh, 
the funds, additional funds that I uh, added in uh, doesn't exceed 50% uh, of the original fund, you know, invested, maybe about 40% and most, not even 40%, maybe, uh, about maybe 20 to 40% of the original investment. So then, you know, um, uh, considering all that, now it is, I mean, but, you know, um, uh, just starting from the uh, uh, a holding period return over like six, seven years, uh, without considering the uh, uh, additional uh, funds that I added in, right? In other words, starting from the uh, uh, initial investment at time zero, uh, it grew almost, you know, uh, uh, 400%. I mean, net growth, net growth alone is about 300% net growth. So over six years, you know, 300%, uh, uh, about 300% growth, net growth. Um, and I haven't, you know, uh, I, I did, you know, um, some buy and sell at, you know, um, at some point, but, you know, um, not frequently. I'm not a day trader um, because I don't have time to, uh, you know, uh, adjust my portfolio every every day. Um, but, you know, uh, even if I had day traded, right, uh, after adjusting for transaction cost, right, uh, and sometimes, you know, it wouldn't have been greater than 300%. Um, and, uh, uh, Sometimes, you know, uh, uh, the problem is sometimes you make a bad trade, you know. Uh, uh, you sell, uh, you think that is the, uh, you know, uh, uh, highest point or the right point to sell, and you sell, but, you know, uh, or sometimes you think, you know, uh, this was a mistake, you know, I better bail out before, before it falls further. And it, when I did that, uh, then eventually those stocks bounced back. So, and then I regret, I should have left it there. I should have left it there. A couple of things. Uh, uh, Madonna, Madonna, uh, I, when, you know, uh, in 2019, uh, when uh, 2020, early 2020, when Moderna uh, uh, was in highlight and it, uh, uh, the stocks, you know, um, uh, were in, uh, Moderna stock was in highlight. I bought some Mod Moderna, and then just a couple of months later, I, they didn't do well. I mean, it didn't grow as much, you know, it didn't go up as much as I expected. Um, that was around uh, June of, you know, I bought it in probably March or, you know, April of 2020, and around June, it wasn't, it wasn't going up that much or, um, probably, you know, slightly went below. And I got, you know, uh, uh, because, you know, there's, there, there must be too much, you know, uh, uh, risk because, you know, uh, no FDA approval yet and there was no chance, uh, 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 there was no telling, you know, uh, whether, you know, they will get FDA approved or whether this will be, you know, uh, they will put out uh, really um, uh, uh the product that will uh, really be, you know, um, uh, ha ha really be, you know, um, uh, high efficacy, you know, I, uh, because of those, you know, uh, uh, questions, uh, I sold them. I sold, and it was, I sold it too prematurely. And then after I sold, <laughs> it bounced back. So, um, and then I never got, uh, I never bought them back again, because, you know, uh, uh, you know, when, when you sell and, you know, uh, when you have smaller funds, you know, you get, uh, uh, you just want to preserve because the, the total amount of fund is smaller. Uh, uh, you get, uh, you get very conservative. I better preserve this 
uh, capital rather than, you know, uh, jumping in. You know. But I should have sold it. I should have, you know, uh, kept Moderna. And then, you know, I would have been in much better position. Uh, but anyway, uh, all of those things, uh, uh, it's pointless to, uh, uh, I mean, you know, it serves, uh, but it serves a good lesson, it serves a good lesson. In other words, you know, don't day trade unless you're willing to, uh, uh, don't frequently uh, buy and sell. I mean, if you, um, if you did the fundamental analysis, fundamental analysis, in other words, you know, uh, uh, based on the financial statements, if you did fundamental analysis then, and if you made a decision, stick to it long term. Don't buy and sell. Don't, you know, uh, don't trade frequently. But anyway, um, it, it works fine. It works well with the, uh, you know, um, this model works for basically, you know, uh, long-term uh, assets, long-term investment. Um, but um, in reality, uh, uh, suppose you borrow money, right? When you borrow money, uh, like, you know, uh, $10,000, and you have to pay interest, right? Uh, if you borrow money, you know, uh, or uh, turn turn the table around, let's say you are the lender. And then uh, if you let loaned, if you lended money, then there will be interest payments. First of all, um, you will collect interest. Uh, when you borrow money, the, there are two ways you can pay it back. Two ways you can pay it back. One, uh, you pay only interest until until the maturity. Bond is a typical example of that. Bond pays uh, uh, interest, only interest, until the maturity. And at maturity, uh, they pay back the principal and the last interest. Uh, otherwise, uh, you amortize. That means uh, you make like periodic installments through periodic installment payment, right? So, um, and the periodic installment consists of both, it's, it's comprised of both interest and principal, right? Part of the small fraction of uh, principal and uh, a uh, small fraction of interest or, you know, uh, spread over like, you know, uh, five years, right? That's called amortization. So uh, in case of bond, and let's say you bought a bond, then you will, you bought a uh, company X bond. You will uh, receive interest until maturity, right? So you have constant cash flow, right? That's called, you know, uh, uh, payment, interest payment, right? Um, uh, so let me start with, um, okay, let me start with uh, present value. Present value is the money you loaned out. Let's say that's 10K. And then uh, you will receive, uh, okay, so I think uh, I better put it down here. And then um, the coupon rate, right? Let's say coupon interest rate is 10%. That's almost, you know, too good to be true. Um, 
Uh, of course, coupon interest rate is R, right? Uh, but then, uh, oh, it, it's not really R, I'm sorry. Uh, the thing is, because bonds pay interest twice a year. Okay, bonds pay interest twice a year. Wouldn't that be um, divided by two? Yeah, yeah, right. So rate R will be five percent, right? So let let me lay out, let me lay down all the. Uh, um, so uh, then, uh, time to maturity, let's say ten years. That's twenty, twenty payments. Yes, that's right. So that means you know. Uh, uh, then R, the periodic rate, will be uh, an, uh, M equals 2 because bonds pay interest twice a year, so it's semi-annual. Then R would be, you know, uh, uh, APR, 10% divided by 2, so it will be 5%, right? And uh, 10 years, so N will be 20 periods, right? There will be 20 compoundings, right? Um, so, and in this case, um, coupon payment will be annually, annually uh, 1,000, right? Uh, uh, you have, you know, uh, all the bonds have face value of 1,000. Uh, so with 10,000, you can buy you can buy about uh, you can buy about 10 bonds you can buy about 10 bonds right uh, so uh, from ten, if you buy 10 bonds then for each bond will pay you a uh, hundred dollars a year but that's so over 10 years uh, with 10 bonds annually, it will be $1,000, right? But you know, uh, you get paid you know, uh, um, twice a year, so each time it is uh, $50 every six months. So with 10 bonds, $500 every 10 months, right? So um, if you buy bonds, this is you know, uh, basically uh, how it's gonna, uh, uh, how it's gonna work, right? Of course, 500 uh, is you know uh, every six months, right? We all know. Now, if you think about um, this scenario, right? Uh, you easily understand that why it is called multiple cash flow, right? This is a typical example of multiple cash flow model. And then, especially um, uh, multiple cash flow, and especially this is called, you know, annuity. I mean, multiple cash flow doesn't have to be annuity, right? But, you know, um, um, I'm going to get to that. Uh, soon, but um, think about it. Question: this, If this was question, professor, if this yeah, was yeah, yeah. if this if this was quarterly, it would be one point five, and the payment would be like uh, no, no, uh, two point. Uh, if it is quarterly, two point five, two point right. five, right? Two point five. Then, then, uh, then, yeah, uh, then the payment, payment would be forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N number of compounding will be 40, or N will be 40, right? Not the payment. N will be 40. Uh, the payment uh, each quarter will be 250, right? Well, that's... And um, this is cash outflow. Sorry, Professor. I was just I was just thinking about other scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 
th that's fine. That's fine. I mean, you know, uh, it's only a matter of just tweaking the scenario a little bit, right? Um, I mean, uh, from from your, uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, from your perspective, not from the company's perspective, but from your perspective. Pretty much the is, consumer's perspective. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah, or, you know, in this case, bondholder. You are the bondholder. From the bondholders, uh, from the bondholders perspective, this is the cash inflow, right? Uh, because the company will pay you um, uh, every six months, right? The interest of five hundred, right? And. Uh, This is your uh, initial investment, right? This is your cash outflow. Or initial investment. Uh, of course, the uh, initial investment was in lump sum, right? A single lump sum uh, cash outflow. Uh, but in uh, the cash inflow, the cash inflow, this is multiple right? In other words, there are 20 of these. So that's multiple cash flow model, isn't it right? That's uh, there will be multiple cash inflows. I mean, and that would be 20, 20 of them exactly. Uh, yeah. There's 20 of them exactly. Hence, uh, cash, uh, multiple cash flow model. Okay, does that make sense? Multiple cash flow model. However, um, uh, this is just one case of multiple cash flow. Um, and in this case, uh, this is called annuity. Bond is, you know, this is a, a, a case of annuity. Uh, and what is annuity? Um, Annuity. Okay, annuity is a uh, um, a regular payment or deposit. Payment and deposit are uh, two sides of the same coin, because uh, from you know um, uh, from the if you are the bondholder. The company, from the company's perspective, right, the company that sold the bond to you, uh, they are making payment to you, right? You're making uh, this semi-annual uh, interest payment is payment. But it's also like making a deposit with you. I mean, for example, if you borrowed money from the bank, right, $10,000, and if you're paying back this way, you're paying back this way. You're paying interest to the bank, and how how do you make uh, uh, interest payment? You deposit, right? You deposit, you know, uh, the interest, the five hundred dollars every month. Uh, I mean, every six months into the bank. So payment and deposit are basically one and the same thing. It's just two sides of the same coin, right? Um, and it is called annuity because annuity sounds like an annual thing. No. It's not only annual. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it is quarterly, daily, or monthly, annually. Um, it doesn't matter how frequently it is. But what's important is at regular interval, uh, annuity is a payment or deposit of this constant amount, regular amount, constant amount, at regular interval until maturity. That's called annuity. Right, and annuity is a uh, one type of multiple cash flow model, and it's a typical case of multiple cash flow model. Another type of multiple cash flow model, uh, multiple cash flow uh, case would be. So in this case, uh, you can also ask about uh, what's going to be the future value of all these annuities. 
right? What's going to be the future value of all these annuities? Um, uh, uh, for example, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get to that. Uh, and another case of um, multiple cash uh, situation is, suppose um, you're making, uh, you're saving, you're saving, but you know, uh, um, it's not regular amount and not at regular interval, right? So let's say time and uh, cash flow zero one two three and think about it every time uh, interest rate uh, you have uh, so let's say uh, at time zero right uh, you make a deposit of uh, one k at uh, time zero, which is now, or beginning of year one, right? Of course, time one is the uh, end of year one, or the beginning of year two, which is the same thing. End of time one uh, is the beginning of time two, right? Um, and at uh, interest rate was 5% at time zero. And at time one, um, you make a deposit of 2K and interest rate at this time, interest rate is 3%. It's all possible, right? And uh, at the end of year two, you make a deposit of uh, 3K, right? And then uh, uh, interest rate is 4K at this, uh, four percent at this time. Uh, at the end of year uh, three, okay. Uh, let's stop here. So for three years, you made uh, these deposits. So uh, it looks like you know uh, still regular interval like uh, end of each year uh, but let's say you know uh, it can be in the middle of the year or but you know let's assume you know uh, end of each year and then at the end of year three then uh, uh, our question is what's going to be the future value of all of this of course at the end of year three um, then, you know, um, uh, oh, oh, let's make it more interesting. Why I can, can I? Ah. Okay, I have to then. Uh, so. In year two, you didn't make any deposit. And at the end of year three, you made 3K and the interest rate was 4%, right? And I better. So, and finally, um, At the end of year four, uh, 
let's say uh, I shouldn't write future value there. I uh, probably need to. Uh, Now, in this case, you made, you know, uh, uh, e a deposit of irregular amount at e irregular interval. Then at the end of your four, what should be the uh, future value? We can think about future value at the end of your four, right? And then um, first, then think about it. Um, this is actually like, you know, a, sim a single cash flow model, right? For uh, uh, the way it works is just like single cash flow model. Uh, it just, you know, uh, it just gets just more complicated. Um, think about it. Uh, the first deposit that was made at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of year one or at time zero, it will earn interest of 5% in the first year. Isn't that right? Uh, just in the first year. It's going to be uh, 1K times 1.05. But this thing earns 3% in the second year. Right? The whole thing, right? This thing earns uh, 3%. And then that will earn uh, 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 for two years, actually, because you know, um, uh, we would assume that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, year one, year two, uh, let's say you know, uh, it's also 3%. Um, unless there was any uh, uh, and also this 4% will still be uh, uh, maintained uh, from year 3 to year 4. So then you know uh, in year 2 uh, it's going to be compounded like this. Uh, uh, Because you know you'll get three percent for two years, right? And then this whole thing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I uh, it gets a bit. Uh, and then yeah, the first one will get right. First one k will get like this, and then uh, it will be then uh, uh, 1.04 squared. This whole thing gets uh, four percent gets compounded for two years. Plus, then think about it. Um, that was one zero three squared as well. Yeah, yeah. That, you see, one point zero three is there, right? In the first year, it earned you know uh, five percent, right? Uh, year two and year three, it earned three percent compounded. Um, uh, year f end of uh, end of year three, in other words, beginning. Uh, um, so this is like, you know, uh, uh, year five, actually, because uh, oh, e end of year four, end of year four. This is beginning of year four, end of year four. Uh, so I don't need to, uh, uh, it's just a, a matter of scenario. I don't need to, uh, uh, I didn't have to do this because, you know, uh, um, this is the, uh, uh, big, uh, this is the end of your three, which is, you know, uh, 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 end of your three, which is the beginning of your four. So basically if, uh, your four, this rate holds, right, for one year, right? Um, Question. Jason, I'll, 
Yeah. Yes. Go on. Question. Go on. Mm-hmm. Uh, how um, how come um, year one doesn't get squared? It's only like one point zero five. Because that was one. just for one year. It was just for one year. Oh, got it. Right. Time zero, which is the beginning of year one, right? And uh, time uh, time one is the end of year one, right? Time zero is the beginning of year one. So for year one, you had 5% interest. And uh, beginning of year two um, is time one, right? Isn't that right? Time one is end of year one, as, a, as well as the beginning of year two. You had 3%. And time two, which is the end of year two and beginning of year three. So in other words, year two and year three, right? Year two and year three, uh, you had uh, 3% twice, right? In other words, in year three, there was no change in interest rate. Um, and you had uh, you didn't make any additional deposit. This 2,000 uh, stayed there through year two and year three. Okay. And time three, which is the uh, end of year three and the beginning of year four, uh, the interest rate was 4%. And at, uh, this is the uh, uh, beginning of year four, so that's the end of uh, year three. So I don't probably I don't need to uh yeah maybe I uh, I shouldn't have even wrote this I think uh, the better better way of doing it uh, is not even having for there so and this is actually um, hold on uh, this is actually not future value four but future value at the end of year three uh, just to make just to uh, unify everything. Uh, Yes. Why does, uh, why does the rate keep on changing? Oh, it's possible because, you know, you're not, um, it's possible because you're not in a contract. Got if you're it. in a binding contract, if you're in a binding contract, the interest rate will hold. But, you know, if you're not in binding contract, this is just a, uh, a deposit you make, you know, sporadically, right? Oh, got it. That makes sense. But then, you know, depending on the uh, what the market interest rate is, the interest rate can, uh, uh, on your deposit can change, you know, constantly, right? Annually, right? Now, but, you know, uh, so look, um, now we, future value three of all these deposits is uh, the sum of, uh, first of all, so that was that was just the uh, future value three of your first deposit of one k. Now, what about the uh, the second deposit of two k? Um, the second second deposit of two k, right? Uh, your two deposit, or, or you know, um, it will. <sighs> So then it's 2K and it's going to earn 1.03 squared for two years, right? And then it will earn 1.04, right? 4% for year three. And then what about the uh, last deposit of 3K? Uh, it's going to earn 1.04, right? So let me move this up a little. Plus, last deposit was 3K, and it will earn 1.04 just for one year because it was deposited um, at the beginning of year three. So, um, let's take a look at the whole picture. Uh, this is the case of, uh, this is an example of multiple cash flow, uh, non-annuity case of multiple cash flow. 
right? Because this is irregular amount at irregular um, at irregular interval, right? Uh, but you know, there's multiple cash outflow, isn't that right? Uh, these are all multiple cash outflows. And then finally, FV3, right, which is this whole thing, right? This is just a single, right, cash inflow. Ah. Right? This is... So um, this is another uh, another uh, case of multiple cash flow, but this is uh, not very important because um, I mean, uh, as long as we have um, uh, as long as we have data, you know, uh, we can handle this uh, easily. Um, it's just a matter of you know uh, keeping track of you know. Uh, cash outflows and cash inflows, right? Uh, more, you know, a complex problem can be, uh, but year, year two, uh, at the end of year two, you made a, uh, you made a withdrawal, right? You made a withdrawal of uh, something. And then, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it can, it can represent the reality, uh, actually, more, uh, more aptly, it can re represent, um, but then what we are more interested in is the case of annuities, right? Because in annuities, um, uh, it's the way basically the bond works, how the bond works, and also it's the way actual loan works. If you borrow money from the bank, think about it. Uh, in, in reality, uh, the bank doesn't wait for you. I mean, suppose you borrowed, you know, uh, $1 million for 10 years at 10% interest rate. Does that mean the bank will wait for 10 years to come up uh, for you to come up with the uh, uh, future value of that uh, 1 million uh, at 10% interest rate? In other words, we can easily calculate the future value in that case, which uh, under a single cash flow model, 1 million times 1.1 raised to 10. But you know uh, that will come to uh, something like you know 2.6 million. Uh, but then, is there any bank that will wait for you, wait 10 years for 10 years for you to come up with that 2.6 million at the date of the maturity? Hmm? No way. That's not how the loan works. It will never. Nobody, no lender will give you like. Uh, it, it's because of the the, the money value loses its, uh, it's because that money loses its value. That's why they wouldn't do that. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, not, not only, not because of that, not only because of that, uh, what you're saying is inflation. I mean, uh, but you know, inflation happens regardless of, you know, uh, um, uh, whether they, um, uh, get re uh, paid back in year one or year two or year 10. Uh, but you know that's what the interest does. You know the uh, basically the reason they charge interest is remember first of all default risk, default risk, right? Second inflation risk. I mean interest must inter interest rate must at least uh, cover for the uh, uh, possible inflation, right? Remember uh, the reason first what what takes up the biggest part of the uh, uh, a cost of capital or interest is the default risk. You must, you know, uh, the higher the uh, default risk, you charge higher interest rate. Uh, and, you know, uh, with the built-in uh, inflation expectation, right? Um, so um, interest rate of 10% will have to uh, 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 cover for the... Uh, uh, potential, you know, inflation. Uh, the the more, more, you know, uh, 
outright, straightforward and outright reason is because of the default risk. You understand? What kind of lender waits 10 years just to get the full lump sum future value back? Huh? You may, you know, uh, suppose you borrowed money to buy a house, huh? which is called mortgage loan. And what happens? Um, you start paying back in monthly installment, right? Monthly installment. And the monthly installment is, you know, um, uh, on top of the uh, uh, the collateral. The, the house you bought is automatically collateralized. So you don't have the title to the house until you pay off. Um, Uh, so that's how, why they could, uh, how they could make the loan. Uh, uh, but you know, uh, on top of all that, they will also, uh, they also um, uh, want you to make the payment in monthly installment, starting from time one. Right. So if you have 30 year mortgage, that means you have 360 payments to make. And each payment consists of, you know, uh, uh, interest and uh, principal, right? And that is exactly annuity because monthly installment is all in the same amount. It's regular amount at regular interval. So it's annuity, right? So that's why uh, annuity reflects, you know, more the reality of, you know, uh, uh, the case of the loan, okay? Alrighty, we're out of time. We're actually seven minutes past the hour, so I'm going to uh, um, uh, I'll have to uh, 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 call it a day. Uh, have a great afternoon, everyone, and I will see you guys uh, on Wednesday. Okay. Alrighty. So. Have a good one, All right, you too. Uh, stop sharing. Stop recording and sign up.